to order for March 26. Um, welcome everybody to a brand new type of meeting here. We'll see how this works. Um, I talked to Sarah. Um, oh, let me also just say here that um, uh, we are recording this uh, through the GoToMeeting service, so we will have an audio archive of this meeting, just like we always do when we meet in person. Um, I will be, as chair of the board, chairing the meeting. Sarah will be sort of the technical person. If issues come up along the way, we have a technical problem, that will be Sarah's domain. Um, I'm also going to try a couple different things here just to keep things flowing. Um, when we, when it comes time to vote on issues, rather than asking all in favor, I will, I will ask each person's name, or I will say each person's name, so that we can re record each individual note, and it's very clear for our records. Um, I will also say that uh, at this point on the call, we have. Uh, the board members, Betsy DeVreda, David Ayal, Doug Rexton, Paul Pickett, myself, CJ Johnson, the chair. We have our legal counsel, Ben Cushman. We have um, Dean Fike from the State Conservation Commission. Uh, we have staff members, uh, Leah and Marguerite. Is there anyone on the call that I missed? Yes, uh, Chris Burns, associate member. All right. Is anyone else getting that very loud background noise? Yeah. No. It looks like and David or should be you were not muted. That might have been you. I can mute I can that. hear it. So I'm going to ask again, is there anyone on the call that I have not uh, identified yet? Associate Supervisor is caller four. And would that be Chris Stearns? I believe so. Okay, welcome Chris. All right, so that's our introductions. Next item on our agenda is an agenda review. The one change that has been made from the hard copy that we received in our packets uh, is we've added item C under the consent agenda, uh, which Sarah just highlighted, which is the uh, shellfish cost share project that she described in her uh, super, uh, her executive director's update. Uh, is there anyone that's not comfortable with including that shellfish contract? Which is just like the other ones we've seen on the uh, on the consent agenda. Okay. If not, then we will leave that there. Are there any other changes to the agenda? I have one. Okay, Betsy, what is it? I'm wondering if um, I was reading about um, the vacancy that we will have um, for Paul Pickett's letter of resignation. And I saw somewhere, however, I can't find it again, that uh, we need to put out, um, advertise it for 28 days. And so I wondered if we wanted to at least touch base about that, the process required. Uh, uh, I can do that if that's the will of the board. My suggestion is that we put that off until our April work session uh, we still, we still, uh, assuming that Paul leaves at the end of April and we haven't filled that vacancy by that point, we still have a board of four to, to move forward with our business. Um, but if people want to put it on today's agenda, we can do that. This Anybody is else? Doug. I'm for putting it off. Hey, Doug, you want to put it off? Uh, David, what do you think? I'm for putting it off also. Okay. All right. So it sounds like we ha have a majority there to put it off and let's make that an uh, uh, item for our April work session. Okay. Thank you. Any other changes to this agenda before us? This if is not, Doug again. Will... Sorry, go ahead. I'd like to have an update on the status of the collective bargaining agreement. Okay, let's put that as item D under governance. CBA update. 
Thank you. Anything else? If not, uh, Betsy, would you like to make a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion that we approve the agenda with the changes noted. Okay. David, would you second that? Yes, I second. Okay. Not hearing David. Let's see. Doug, would you second that? Yes, I second. I okay. did hear David second it for the record. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that. So moved by Betsy, seconded by David. Um, uh, Betsy, uh, I'm going to go around again. Um, how do you vote? I vote aye. Yes. David? Yes, I vote yes. Doug? Uh, yes, but I have a question about it. The copy I've got of the decision sheet says January 30th, 2020. The date it was adopted. It seems like it should be today's date. Uh, what sheet is that? Uh, the consent calendar decision sheet. I don't. Mine says today's date, March 26th. Yeah, it says March 26th in the title, but in the the body below B in cap. Got it. it okay, so let's make that change. Yeah, with that change, I'm just fine with it. Okay, and then Paul. We're voting on the agenda, aye. Yeah. Okay, and I vote aye as well. We have an approved agenda. Next item on the agenda is our consent agenda. Um, three items, the February 27th board meeting minute, the February financial report, and the item we added, the shellfish cost share um, number 17666. Uh, Paul, is there a motion on the consent agenda? Sure, I move adoption of the consent agenda. Okay, moved by, moved, moved by Paul. Um, I second it. Seconded by Betsy. All those, uh, oops, sorry, bad habit here. Um, Paul, how do you vote? Aye. Doug? Aye. David? Aye. Betsy? Aye. And the chair votes aye. We've approved the consent agenda. Next item on here is public comment. I don't believe we have anyone from the public on the call, uh, but if we do and they wish to speak, now would be the time to let us know. TJ, I would also like to share that I did not receive any written comments prior to the meeting. Thank you. So there's no verbal comments. There's no written comments. There is no public comment. We will move on to item five, continuity of operations. Uh, 5A, review delegation of authority. I assume that's you, Sarah. Yeah, uh, so this is something that um, I wanted to put on here just as we discussed, um, you know, the, the situation at hand with the COVID-19 health crisis um, to ensure that we have a robust conversation about uh, duties and authorities of the district. Um, I think we've done an excellent job, both board and staff, our entire organization in um, adapting and working around, um, you know, a lot of these new challenges that have come up. So um, I put the uh, review delegations of authority on there. I, the Board of Supervisors has delegated certain duties to myself um, as the executive director and to Susan as the accountant slash treasurer for the district's finances. Um, and I, this was just to ensure that we had conversation about any changes that might need to be made in any temporary or permanent fashion. I have not, um, I'm not recommending any changes, um, uh, but I wanted to make sure that that was one of the items uh, that we considered during our discussion, in addition to some of the items you'll see below about operating hours and services. So I called those specific items out separately in case 
uh, the board had any particular interest in discussing any of those or making any changes. Thank you. So I will ask board members, are there any questions uh, or comments about the delegation of authority as it currently stands? I would have uh, just one question for Sarah, just kind of, if there could be some examples of, uh, of what you would foresee some of these expenses possibly being. Yeah, so, um, and you're specifically talking about uh, the resolution, TCD resolution about emergency spending under item E, David? Yes, that's it, yep. Uh, so at this point, what it's mostly looking like is um, uh, telework equipment uh, that is one piece that's coming up um, as essential to continue operations. Um, so a new laptop. Um, at this point, uh, that's all that I'm foreseeing, but that you know, new laptop is something that's not um, currently a component of our uh, board approved 2020 budget. So that um, is an extra component that I'm asking for approval on. I'm not sure, to be honest, what might arise in the future, um, you know, their costs or needs. Moving our equipment and, and rehousing that is a, is a good example too. There's a small amount for a leak. Um, and, uh, but just to continue to be nimble and be able to uh, react quickly if we do have, you know, smaller expenses come up with really the intent of that resolution. And that would, of course, be communication with super. Okay. Thank you. That uh, answers my question. Is anybody else hearing a lot of bad hissing? Yes, I'm hearing that. Uh, I don't know. Someone suggested it might be something about David's microphone. I would suggest that everyone who's not speaking, turn off your microphone. Let's see if we can minimize some of that background noise and then turn on your microphone when, when you desire to speak. Maybe that'll clear it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, that might also facilitate hand raising because the uh, you can monitor whose microphone gets turned on and call on them. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So anything else uh, under the uh, item A delegation of authority? I guess I just had one related question, Sarah. Do we have any further, or maybe this is for Jean? Do we have any further guidance about whether the state considers uh, CDs as essential services during the shutdown? Would you like me to um, tell you what I've learned about that so far? Absolutely. Okay, so um, I wasn't in the conversation, but there was a conversation with the, um, the AG's office on the subject. And um, unfortunately, we're not in a position to be able to provide interpretation of the governor's order as the conservation commission we don't have authority around that the the only thing to really go on is the language of the order itself um, so short of uh, an interpretation by the governor's office regarding how to understand the a particular body of work uh, relative to the language in the order um, our hands are sort of tied. What, what we are going to provide, if it hasn't already been posted, it will be soon, is some things to think about um, that we uh, gleaned in our conversation with the AG. So there are certain provisions that you might want to look at. And if the board makes a determination that they feel that certain staff and certain roles meet those criteria, what some of the other provisions you'll need to uh, make sure you attend to also are. And so there'll, there'll be some language you'll see on the COVID-19 page on the commission website. Um, they may be there now. I haven't, haven't looked in the last few hours um, to, to sort of walk you through that. But at the end of the day, the commission doesn't have any authority to sort of certify anybody. There's that language in the um, order that says that there isn't any certification uh, in, in the order. So. Um, unfortunately, if we were to tell you it's fine, it wouldn't mean anything. We don't have that authority. So um, what, what questions can I answer with that introduction? 
I, I can probably ring in here. Um, I've reviewed the order and interpreted it. I've been doing that not just for the TCD, but for multiple clients um, since it came out. And I have, I believe that um, most of our staff who are involved in administering assistance programs and grants are going to be essential. Um, also, those who aren't are probably necessary for continuity operations, and those aren't essential but are exempt um, from uh, the requirement. Uh, um, so that's what I think. That said, um, on the coronavirus.wa.gov page, there is a form that can be used to ask the governor's office for their interpretation of essential. So Sarah, if you could go to coronavirus.wa.gov and find the, the submittal form to say, are we essential or not? It might be worth filling out and sending into the governor. So let me check with the board there because I, I agree with that assessment, Ben. Um, is there any member of the board that doesn't think we should direct Sarah to fill out that form and try to get further clarification from the governor's office? Okay, hearing no objections there, um, Sarah, uh, we're, I guess we're directing you to do that and try to get some clarification for us. This is Paul. Oh, sorry, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll send you guys the uh, conference call bingo. It's very amusing. Um, I just did one of them. I was on mute. Um, the, um, I just want to clarify because we're following procedures and what, what exactly is the concern? Because we're following procedures. Our office is effectively closed. Most staff are teleworking. We're doing limited field work. Um, so I'm just not quite sure what the governor's proclamation appears to be asking that we aren't doing. Well, to the my, extent, my take on that is we have at least one item on this agenda: equipment rental and soil testing that gets to that very issue, because um, that moves beyond our employees working at home exclusively, particularly with the soil testing recommendation. And maybe Sarah or Ben have other things to add to that. Yeah, it gives us flexibility in operations. Um, we should continue to have people work at home and remotely, even if they are essential to the extent that we can, but um, it gives Sarah the flexibility to call people in if they are essential, if for some reason that is necessary. So it, 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 I don't think we're doing anything based on our current operations that requires that our people be essential, but the board meets monthly in a way that can take action and Sarah needs the flexibility to adapt in real time and having people be essential gives her more flexibility. Uh, I would just add to that too, that um, my uh, biggest question or concern is, is you know, around um, uh, financial uh, department and, and uh, processing those financial payments, which I'm hearing might actually be um, excluded from that, but processing those uh, check runs in particular uh, and, and using some of the office uh, equipment to uh, make sure that vouchers are processed. I'm thinking more not in the short term, uh, but in, in the long term, if, if this uh, stay at home order is extended beyond the two weeks, um, it will be extremely helpful uh, to know uh, really where we're at. Other than that, uh, everything primarily can be can be done remotely. Um, those equipment rental and soil testing components are are two of them that uh, this could impact as well.
Anyone Thanks. else? Okay. So I'm hearing our executive director say she would like to pursue clarification from the governor's office that it could be helpful. Is there anyone on the board that objects to that direction? If not, we will move forward with Sarah doing that. Okay. Let's I would just move. like to point out uh, regarding the banks that they're only taking things at the uh, car teller machines that I'm aware of. They're not having direct interactions with customers. So if you're processing any checks that come into the to the uh, conservation district. It has to be done through the vacuum system that they have uh, at the cars when you drive in. And I believe for the credit unions, the employees credit union, they only have a few branches open doing that. Uh, the one in Lacey, one in Tumwater, and I think one down in Martin Way. That's all. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to item B uh, under uh, continuity, the operating hours. Sarah? Yeah, so this is something I wanted to check in with uh, the board on. Uh, as you know, as of March 18th, our office uh, closed to the public. Uh, our staff began teleworking. Um, and so we've transitioned all of our staff to a telework capacity. Um, and our office is currently closed to the public. Uh, that's something that I wanted to bring to the board to see if there was any additional discussion about that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Question? Go ahead. Um, are incoming calls being routed? Uh, is Leah working from home and incoming calls are being routed to her home phone? Uh, incoming calls are not being routed to Leah. What we have are uh, two things. One is uh, we have the ability to check all of our uh, voice mailboxes at the district uh, remotely. The second thing is uh, that we also have messages on all of our district um, desk phones, including our mainline phone about uh, office being closed and how to reach our staff in its remote capacity. Um, and the third thing is, uh, while we have had the flexibility before the, the stay home, uh, stay healthy order came out, was that Leah was um, the only one uh, allowed to access the building. So she was able to field initially a lot of those calls that we had between the 18th and, and today. Okay, any other questions about operating hours before we move on? This is Doug. I think Sarah's probably already done with this because she thinks about these things. We need to have the uh, contact information up on the office window so if somebody goes, they can look at the contact information on a little poster or something. And it also ought to be on the web page uh, with the contact information, which I suspect it is. Did you catch that, Sarah? I caught that. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. So we have all of the contact information on our website, as well as a notice on the very front page of our website about our remote operations. Uh, we have our general contact information on the front door, um, and we can absolutely um, print off our, our all staff um, uh, contact information to put up there with our remote work. Uh, notice. So I okay. just, hello, I just checked the website and it says until March 31st. So do we want, when are we going to change that? We're closed until March 31st, it says. Well, I think we're closed um, for two weeks from Wednesday under the governor's order, right? Right, so that's something new that has uh, come since that notice was created. Um, and another uh, conversation that the board may want to entertain 
Uh, my plans are to extend that to match the governor's order. Um, and then, you know, the I would bring that to the board um, to see what the board uh, uh, recommends to. Okay. Anything further on operating hours? I think we follow the governor's instructions and err on the side of caution and safety for staff and the public. Good philosophy, Doug. Let's move on to item C, um, services, equipment rental and soil testing. So uh, this element here, um, I included a proposal uh, in my director's report. Um, we uh, suspended those services when our office uh, was closed to the public on March 18th. The current practices associated with facilitating both of those services um, did not follow so social distancing guidelines and uh, caused other uh, concerns about sanitizing and um, health and safety of staff in the community. Um, so what we've done in the meantime is uh, work to transition as much of the facilitation and coordination of those services to a web-based capacity as we can, including getting uh, payment mechanisms and uh, equipment rental agreements and soil testing forms um, into an electronic format that can be housed on our website. Uh, you'll see in my proposal that if the board is interested in uh, resuming those services, there's some slightly different approaches that I've proposed there, and that's um, having an outdoor drop box for our soil testing where staff is processing after a certain period of time, um, and or uh, asking folks uh, to submit soil testing, soil samples directly to the lab, and then we provide the TA only component to that. Um, the, with our equipment rental program, our spreaders uh, that are housed at uh, the Scatter Creek Farm um, owned by the Community Farmland Trust, uh, those uh, spreaders we can coordinate a continuous. Um, uh, rental. This is a, a peak season for that type of equipment and uh, so we can have single producer to producer transactions and ask that they follow safe social distancing guidelines. Um, so we're not involving any more uh, individuals than necessary in that process. The biggest issue um, with our equipment rental program is our uh, poultry processing equipment, which is currently housed inside the district office, has multiple different pieces, um, and uh, there's not a great way to transfer that um, equipment at this time in the same capacity. It's also rented on a much shorter term basis. It's rented uh, daily rather than uh, weekly, like our spreading equipment. Um, I've shared that we could uh, make it more mobile um, by purchasing uh, small enclosed utility trailers that lock and housing them at the Scatter Creek Farm as well. Uh, and this is uh, a model that other districts that have the uh, poultry processing equipment have towable trailers to house the equipment. Uh, it's something that I'd like to see for that those pieces of equipment in the future. Um, and certainly something that we would have to have if we were considering um, uh, opening the equipment rental program and adding those units to that at this time. I would also be interested in um, in in the board requesting uh, Ben's perspective on this and any potential risk and liability he sees with facilitating either of those programs. Yeah, I'd like to hear from Ben next if we could. Um, I think that as long as we're maintaining the programs with uh, physical contact being uh, six feet apart and think about maybe enhanced cleaning of returned equipment um, uh, during the process. Uh, 
we we should be covering um, our bases in terms of uh, reasonable actions taken to prevent um, the spread of the virus. Uh, um, right now, we don't know how long it stays on surfaces. We do know that it stays on surfaces less long outside, and it appears to be killed by ultraviolet light, which means the outside equipment should probably be fine. But out of an abundance of caution, um, washing returned equipment um, uh, more carefully than 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 normal is probably warranted. Uh, those are the only two things I I think that I can think of right now. I will. Um, sleep on it and uh, if I think of other things um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, um, advise the board. Um, one common lawyer response is having people sign a specific waiver where they acknowledge risk. Uh, I am not sure we want to do that politically. Uh, I am also not sure it's reasonable to to warn people about a risk that we don't know exists. Um, uh, and I think that everybody already has the same information we do. Um, and, can, and so I don't know that any special or separate warning is warranted, but that would be the only other thing I could think of doing. And, and I will think about whether it's something I will advise or not, but I'm not prepared to advise it at this time. I'd like to add one clarification to uh, my proposal about the equipment rental program is not that the equipment uh, is returned after each use, but that there's continuity of, of um, producers using the equipment uh, during this time so that the equipment is transferred from it, producer to producer. So we have uh, pretty strict cleaning guidelines already just from the nature of the types of equipment that are being utilized there's um you know risk of spread spreading other types of pathogens or or disease um through them because they're spreading manure or slaughtering pathogens. um and so there's already a, a specific cleaning agreement we could um enhance those cleaning guidelines for individuals to um, do extra sanitization if they would like to rent the equipment before it's passed on. Uh, but I'm not proposing that the equipment come back to the district um, in between because that would, um, I, th I feel like that would pose some challenges with uh, staff that are in telework mode um, that would introduce additional individuals into the process. I'm trying to move the program to as much of a uh, remote accessible uh, uh, service as we can right now just to minimize the number of individuals that are involved in that process. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that there's enough demand and we've we've done this arrangement before, especially when there's enough demand for equipment. Uh, that it's transferred from producer to producer, um, and you know any damages or or malfunctioning issues, you know, are reported to the district immediately, um, and we haven't had any trouble with that um, uh, over the years. So, um, yeah, yeah that, that probably actually Hello? produces less liability than than I was thinking. So I think that that is a better practice than the one I was proposing. Um, we might, I mean, I'm not an expert in um, how to clean equipment to prevent spread of this particular type of pathogen. Um, if there's some way we can get some someone to ring in on it and review our cleaning protocols and say that's sufficient, we should. But uh, otherwise, I think that it probably already is sufficient, uh, it were, especially if we're like cleaning blood from chickens or manure uh, that the, the risks of viral and bacterial spread are the same. So, um, I have Betsy, a comment. yeah, go ahead, Betsy. I saw you were next in the queue. Thanks. Um, two things. One, um, I'm wondering if you think it couldn't also be possible to um, pass these 
poultry slaughter equipment from producer to producer. Since it will be on a trailer. And the second thing is whenever we make a decision about this, I'd like to see it go on the website as soon as possible because people might read this and say, oh, they say everything's shut down until March 31st, and they'll just they'll just give up. Rather, but we should say it's a work in progress. Please check back or give them as much information as possible. A couple of, of thoughts on that or, or responses to that. Uh, we don't currently have enclosed trailers for the poultry processing equipment. If that's an expense that the board would like to see, um, I did a very quick uh, pricing estimate. Uh, we could get trailers for both of the units for under $5,000. Um, but that's not currently in our approved board approved budget. So that would need to be an expense that the board approves. Um, I do not at this point have uh, a good estimate for timing on acquiring those trailers um, to put the equipment in. So the poultry processing unit, I would not estimate would be up to run in this fashion within the next two weeks, but we could certainly be working on it the next two weeks. Uh, to make it um, uh, up and running. The other spreaders um, are ready to go uh, according to this program. If the board would like to see that happen, it would like to authorize the program to continue, that can happen as early as tomorrow. Um, so we have a current list of folks that have reservations for these pieces of equipment already. Um, and some folks that, uh, you know, had called uh, we're on the list and, and were canceled for the last week um, uh, of reservations. So we would call them and have them come in um, to rent the equipment. So uh, in addition to publicizing that the equipment rental program is still open and has this different process than folks might be used to, uh, we have we have individuals that are already signed up and ready to go. Well, I would like to just... Um I think the poultry equipment is really important, high priority. People want to raise food now that they can't count on, they're worried about the supply chain and so on. So um, whatever it takes to put that in our budget, I would support that. So this, is a fair, this is a fairly major decision for us. So I want to go through each board member and hear your thoughts on this or any additional questions you have. Uh, and then come back around to see if we can make a decision. So, um, Betsy, did you have anything else to add before we moved on from you? Yeah, I, just, I will add um, that um, one of the benefits of getting these trailers where the poultry equipment is on it is it requires two times that you don't have to uh, load and unload the equipment. You go to the wherever it is, you haul the trailer away. You don't pick up this heavy it's very heavy equipment it takes at least two people put it on your truck get to your farm take it off your truck put it back on your truck go to the district and drop it off again and that so that will save staff time because staff used to have, well they wouldn't help load because they couldn't always physically um it'll make it a lot easier um lewis county does it i rented mine from lewis county last year because i couldn't rent it from you and i was like and i've already reserved it from lewis county because I want the trailer. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move to David next. Any thoughts on the topic, David? Yeah, I uh, just, uh, my only concern, I guess, uh, if we're getting this equipment, uh, just costs, you know, things, uh, things of that nature. What's this gonna cost us? It's not a part of the budget, so how much are we gonna have to, to come up with and is it possible to come up with? Okay, so, Sarah gave us a preliminary estimate of the cost of these trailers, around $5,000. Is that right, Sarah? Yeah, that's what I've been uh, able to find so far, is that we should be able to get two of these really small enclosed utility trailers uh, for no more than $5,000. Um, you know, that's subject to availability of, of these trailers in local um, stores and that we're not going to have to have anything shipped, which might be an additional cost. Adds a little bit of cushion, um, and I feel fairly comfortable with that estimate. 
Can that's five thousand a piece? No, for both. For both, okay. And where would the funding source for that come from? So uh, we had a conversation at the beginning of this year about um, when, when reconciling uh, our budget for 2019. Uh, we're about to see some of our peak cash flow with uh, rates and charges because property tax payments come in in April and October, and we see larger waves of them in May um and november and it it sort of that that's sort of our peak times so we'll really realize a lot of our 2019 kind of months um, throughout this next couple of months so my recommendation is that if the board did in pursuing those trailers which i also think is a great idea um, that those would come out of unspent funding uh, from 2018 and that we would allocate those in the budget and reconcile that as part of the mid-year budget revision process to show uh, to show those where those funds came from and, and those trailers in the line item. I, I think that sounds good for me. I'm, I'm all in the agreement of getting the trailers. Okay, thank you, David. Let's move to um, Doug. Yeah, it's been covered already, all the questions I had, both from Sarah and David. So I'm, I'm fine with pursuing two trailers for 5,000 plus or minus. Okay, Paul? <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Um, just a couple observations. I um, like Ben's analysis, and I think it's good to, you know, the, the food and agriculture aspect of this you know that we're keeping food operations open and i think to really advocate for the fact that to grow our food and to have farming to create food is absolutely essential so we're part of that whole loop and um the uh having said that and i think that um something just came to mind was that if the stores and um Rest, you know, maybe not restaurants, but stores are still open and they have to deal with this issue of contact. There may be some procedures that, uh, you know, some some uh, resources about procedures for disinfecting equipment um, or, uh, you know, just it'd be nice to have like established safety procedures that we can refer to and maybe have instructions that go with the equipment for people to disinfect it. It's kind of when you go to the gym and they say, you know, clean all the equipment when you when you're done and clean the equipment <laughs> apart. Now you just have to remind people to do that. And I definitely think, um, you know, we had some reserves intended for emergencies. I think we're in an emergency situation, but I also think the things we're buying are things that will be good for the organization even after the emergency. So I think the trailers sound good, and I would uh, support the resolution that's on the agenda to increase the amount of money in that to give Sarah the flexibility to, I think we have to be really nimble. We don't know what's happening. We're in unknown territory. Things seem to change day by day. And I really want to give Sarah the tools to, to adapt quickly. Um, and just the funding is one of those tools. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about these three components, uh, individually because I have a different take, I think, uh, on each of them. Uh, first, on the soil testing program, I'm completely comfortable keeping that open. I think um, we've come up with a good way to do that um, that, uh, that allows public to get the service but still maintains some control through the district staff. And, and uh, so I, I like that piece. Um, the second one on um, the equipment rental, um, I have really big concerns about farmer to farmer exchange of that equipment and our potential liability in that process. While we could tell people you should do this and you should do that in terms of cleaning the equipment or passing it on, um, that may not happen because, because we don't interface between those transactions with the customers. I'm, I'm very uncomfortable at bringing that additional liability onto the district right now. Um, 
the third piece on the poultry processing thing, yeah, I uh, I think it's great if we want to pursue a trailer at some point, though recognizing that not everyone who uses that equipment has the ability to pull a trailer, um, myself included. I've used the equipment a lot, and I don't have the ability to pull a trailer, so I put it in my pickup truck. Um, but more more to the point is. Um, we could be faced with lots of expenditures that we haven't anticipated depending on the length of this shutdown. So I would not favor purchasing trailers at this point. Um, I might be in a very different position two weeks or three weeks or four weeks from now depending on how things progress. Um, uh, also, with the, the equipment thing, I, I, depending on how things progress, my concerns about liability might either be heightened or lessened over time. Um, so that's where I'm at. Yeah, let's move forward with the soil testing. Um, let's not move with forward with the farmer to farmer transfer of the spreaders. And let's not at this time. Uh, make the poultry processing equipment available or purchase a trailer at this point, um, but be prepared to revisit that, you know, who knows, a week, two weeks, three weeks into the future. Um, so that's my thought on it. And I think as we need to come to some resolution on this, um, I know Betsy, you have spent a lot of time talking with Sarah about this. So why don't you just to start a process here, if you'd be willing, make a motion of how to proceed on these issues. Um, well, I move that we, um, direct Sarah to buy the trailers. We don't have to implement using them right away. And I direct her to, um, seek out the experts that could tell us what we would need to do to feel comfortable passing them from producer to producer. And that would include the other equipment as well. I know we we have already done that in the past. Other districts have. I know I picked up equipment from another producer once. Um, so I don't know if I if I was concise enough to call that a motion though. Uh, so and, and just to clarify, uh, are you saying yes to soil testing? Uh, yes. Okay. So as I understand the motion that Betsy just made, it would be to direct Sarah um, to move forward with the purchase of trailers um, and to get additional information on uh, farmer to farmer or user to user transfer before actually implementing that program and then to move forward with the soil testing program as recommended. If that's captures your motion, I will ask, Doug, are you willing to second that? Yes, I am. I think with the addition of in the second one where the transfer for farmer to farmer or producer to producer, that the liability is assessed, because I had the same uh, concern you did. I thought I heard Ben say that the liability was minimal, but I, I could have misheard. Yeah, let me let me ring in on this and ask Sarah a couple questions. Sarah. Um, in our current in the proposed in the process you're proposing who has the obligation to clean the equipment is it cleaned after the use and before transfer or is it cleaned by the person who has just picked it up before they use it after use and before transfer okay if you change that to after transfer or before and before use or put it in both places um, then any person who uses dirty equipment used it because they failed to do the cleaning that they were required to do. And that would be a failure on them and not on us. So if we have in the agreement that although the equipment should be cleaned by the person they're picking up it up from, they have an obligation to clean it themselves before using it. Um, I believe that that will avoid the liability of not having the control and cleaning it ourselves. Okay. So there's a 
uh, legal clarification to the motion there, I think, from um, Ben. Um, further discussion on this motion um, made by Betsy, seconded by Doug. Uh, David or Paul, do you have uh, comments before we move to a vote? Uh, no comments from me on this at this time. Paul? Um, if you could just repeat the motion one more time. I will do my best. Uh, I think the motion is to direct Sarah to move forward with purchase of two trailers for the poultry equipment uh, in the approximate amount of $5,000 uh, to establish clear uh, uh, protocols um, for how equipment would be transferred between users that would include both the poultry equipment as well as our other uh, spreaders and uh, et cetera. Um, and then that we would implement the soil testing program as recommended by Sarah. Is everybody clear on the motion? Is there anyone who's not clear on the motion? Question. Um, so the equipment to equipment transfer part of the motion would apply to both the manure spreader and the poultry equipment? I think that's correct, is it not? That's correct in my proposal. Okay. So it sounds like that's correct. Okay. So I, uh, I'm assuming we're ready to vote here. So let's go through the roll call vote on the motion. Um, Betsy, how do you vote? I vote aye. David? Aye. Doug? Aye. All? Aye. <laughs> uh, and I will vote reluctantly, I with uh, noting my, I still have concerns about our liability, but I also understand the need. So um, the vote is unanimous. And Sarah, are you clear about direction now? I just want to clarify one thing um, with the equipment rental program. Once we've assessed additional liability and added the components, that Ben mentioned in the cleaning requirements and done additional research about proper cleaning, um, uh, which will likely take a little bit longer than being able to open tomorrow. Um, are staff free then to implement the uh, um, equipment rental program again, or would you like uh, to meet staff to bring this back to the board for additional decision? I think the motion gave you, if I'm wrong, board members tell me, but I think the motion gave you the flexibility to move forward with the program uh, after you've addressed these liability concerns. Great, thank you for the clarification. Okay. Thanks everybody. Let's move on to item D, um, board response to COVID-19. This is listed as an action item. And uh, Sarah, check me if I'm wrong here, but I think what we're looking at in terms of this response uh, was on your continuity memo beginning at the bottom of page one where, uh, and continuing on to page two that outlined, uh, I think uh, six things in order that would be our priorities during the shutdown. Is that what we're, we're talking about here? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so uh, I will read these out just so that everybody is clear that the, the, the suggested hierarchy here would be, number one, health and safety of community members, board and staff. Number two, critical administrative and financial functions, approvals, payrolls, account payable, landowner reimbursement for project implementation, if applicable during this time and accounts receivable. Number three, adherence to landowner construction project implementation and permitting timelines. Four, continuity of TCD equipment rental and soil testing services. Five, technical assistance site visits and planning services. And six, educational events and workshops. Um, 
Is there someone that would like to make a motion at this point to uh, approve that that would allow us to start talking about that? Doug, so moved. Where did you just read that from? Sarah's uh, memo dated March 26 uh, on organizational continuity it begins at the bottom of page one and continues on the page two. She's now put it up here on our screen. I, I think, Doug, was that you that made the motion? Yeah. Okay, Doug has moved that we accept this, uh, this priority. Uh, Betsy, are you willing to second that? Yes, I second it. Okay, moved by Doug, seconded by Betsy to accept this proposal for a, a six-step hierarchy uh, of prioritization. Um, are there comments uh, or concerns about this uh, proposal? This is Doug. Yes, there are, or at least one that I have. Okay. I think, the, I think the first order is to be consistent with applicable laws and regulations. which by being so broad covers us for a whole lot of things. Okay. So could we consider that, Betsy, would you consider that a friendly amendment to the motion to uh, put a new number one, which would be follow all relevant laws and regulations? Yes, definitely. Okay. Thank you, Doug. So we now have a, a seven-step uh, prioritization. Are there further comments or questions about this? Question? Yes. Um, just, uh, it may be implicit in this. One thing is, um, I guess the uh, there's two sides of this issue. One is just that we we are continuing to take our funding and move it to the community so that we're, um, you know, being part of uh, keeping the economy moving. And I guess the, the flip side of that is that we are meeting our obligations under uh, grants to the extent possible. I think that should be low on the list, but is that, is that implicit in your, in your administrative and financial functions, Sarah? Uh, yes. Yep. So that would be under the critical administrative functions is uh, continuing to, to meet the grant uh, deliverables and priorities. Some of the specific actions do so are included in three through five or three through six in order. Yeah, I have one legal comment on the order of priorities proposed by Doug. I think that the board has discretion if it chooses to switch to swap one and two if it wants to send a, um, a a political message that health and safety is prioritized there is a necessity defense to any non-compliance with law that would kick in in my opinion Doug, if would you like our compliance to... um jeopardized health and safety so I think we could put health and safety above legal compliance if we want to, although we don't need to. I think that's politically astute. I'm okay with that. Okay, so Doug, you'll, you'll change your motion to swap number one and number two? Yeah, Did you just make it... the new one? Is it, are we calling it legal requirements meet legal requirements? Yeah, I think number one will remain all health and relevant safety. laws and regulations. So, uh, Doug accepts uh, the swapping of one and two. Betsy is the seconder. Do you accept that? Yes, I do. Okay. Any further concerns before we vote? Okay. I will call the roll call vote then. Um, Ms. Paul. Let's see. We'll start with the maker of the motion, Doug. Aye. Uh, Betsy? Aye. Paul? What we're doing right now is um, number one is health, number two is everything else on the list. Number yes. two, it. Somebody, 
how do you vote, Paul? I'm getting that. Here. Come on here. So, Paul, how do you vote? Yes. Yes. David. Aye. And the chair votes aye. It passes unanimously. We have prioritization. Thank you. Um, last item under continuity here is the resolution 2020-03 uh, for emergency spending. Sarah, do you want to say anything about this before we uh, move to a vote or board discussion? Uh, just restating what I shared earlier, just to help keep us uh, nimble and adaptive as the next couple of weeks unfold and we address new things. Um, if there are expenses that are outside of uh, the board approved budget, but necessary to continue operations, uh, that we have some means to do that in, in between board meetings. Um, and that was really the intent behind this resolution. Okay, sure. uh, start the process here. I would entertain a motion on this resolution. Chair, uh, I'd like to move we adopt the resolution, but I would like to reword it to say that we are authorizing um, $15,000 so that we're including the cost of the trailers and we're providing extra funds for unexpected contingencies. Okay, so Paul has made a motion to accept the resolution changing $5,000 to $15,000. Is there a second there for the motion? I'll second. Okay, David is seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Um, Paul? Aye. Paul votes aye. David? Aye. David votes aye. Doug? Aye. Doug votes aye. Betsy? Aye. Betsy votes aye, and the chair votes aye. It has passed unanimously with the adjustment to $15,000. That moves us on to uh, item six, our financial report, uh, which was emailed out by Susan yesterday. Um, Susan is not on the call, but there is. So are there questions about the financial report from board members? Um, okay, I have one question. Um, uh, Susan discussed in her uh, comments uh, the variability of rates and charges. Um, I'm wondering if there's any reason to think, given everything that's going on, that there would be any changes in our uh, projected rates and charges revenue or whether there's been any conversation with the county about the possibility of changes in those projections? Uh, I actually uh, watched a uh, webinar or participated in an MRSC webinar today about the impacts, potential impacts of COVID-19 on um, financial health of government. Um, and it seems like their recommendation is that um, uh, uh, revenue that is collected via property taxes is at kind of the highest tier of being a safe mechanism for receiving funding, especially if it's already in established, been established and in effect. So um, uh, that was really great news to hear uh, because the mechanism is already um, occurring. Um, you know, I, I, I think we have a pretty safe um, uh, process because it's already in effect. Uh, you know, unforeseen circumstances could arise if there is a drop in um, individuals that are paying property taxes. Um, most of uh, the property taxes are collected, you know, via escrow and paid continuously throughout the year. Um, so uh, there's, I haven't uh, heard anything from the county, but that's definitely something I could follow up on to see if they have any uh, concerns that, that they have about rates and charges. 
I, I would appreciate a cumber if we could have a conversation with the county just to, to get a read on that. This is not anything that would impact us immediately, but depending on the severity and the duration of this emergency, uh, I think it'd be good to know if, if there, there would be impacts, particularly as we're now in this period where we're spending down cash reserves on the assumption of a big chunk of rates and charges starting to come in again fairly soon. I'd be happy to follow up. Thank you. Any other questions on financial report? I have one. Yeah, um, Betsy. I'm just confused about the plant sales. We sold out of plants, but we only came, you know, a little over half of our income. Uh, what am I missing? I know we got money in 2019, but but in the report by Susan, when she's describing things under item five income, she said um, the budget was 21,600. We received roughly 12,000 so far in 2019. And she expects to receive the remaining amount in the autumn during the pre-order for 2021. I, is that how it works? So our budget kind of overlaps because we get money in the fall and that goes to last year's budget. Sure, so Susan's notes on this are reflective of our district's annual calendar year budget from January through December, okay. which cuts those plant sales in half. Okay, I got it. So we did we did great on the plant sale. That That's the bottom line I'm asking. Yeah, we, we okay. did did better on the plant sale than we have in the past. It is definitely something we always market first as an outreach event um, rather than a sale that is intended to incur revenue. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments on financial report before we move on? Okay. Let's move on to uh, governance then. Um, first item here is our travel policy for employees, staff, and volunteers, which we've worked on extensively, and um, uh, it's up for an action item this evening. So um, let's see, Paul, you've spent a lot of time working on this. Do you want to make a motion? Uh, sure, I would move adoption of the travel policy uh, in the form that came out of the work session. Okay, and uh, seconded by Betsy. Uh, any further discussion? I have a point of clarification I'd like to ask. Yes. Uh, the copy that was included in the board packet is inclusive of the mileage. Um, or distance uh, rather than the hour distance for reimbursement for lodging. So Paul's motion was to approve the version that came out of the work session, but the version in your packet does have that up. I, I took the motion David, to be approved. <laughs> Paul, let me motion. amend my motion to adopt the travel policy with the one from the work session with the one change that changes travel time to 50 miles a year. Okay. So moved by Paul, seconded by, I think, Betsy. Excuse me, I noticed that when David's microphone is on, or at least I assume when his guy is highlighted, there's a lot of background noise. I could barely hear anything that was said in the last one. Okay, thank you. All right, let's move to a roll call vote on this motion then to approve the travel policy for employees, staff, and volunteers as in our packet with the, the change uh, that uh, Sarah just described. Uh, Paul, how do you vote? Aye. All votes aye. Uh, hey. Betsy? Aye. Betsy. Vote aye. Betsy votes aye. David? Aye. 
David votes aye. Doug? Aye. Doug votes aye and the chair votes aye. That has passed. Um, next action item is resolution 2020-04, the executive director evaluation process. This again is something that we worked on uh, and finalized at our work session. Um, let's, uh, I'll ask for a motion on this. This is Doug, so moved. Doug moves the resolution. Is there a second? I'll second it. Etsy has seconded it. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I have two comments. One ahead, the question. I'd like to get Sarah's recommendation, make sure she's okay with this. And then the title, the second item, I would change the wording from a resolution of the Thurston Conservation District to establish an annual evaluation. Change that word into establishing an, an annual evaluation process. To establish means it's future action. Establish means now. Seems like a uh, grammatical, non substantive change. But uh, Sarah, uh, Doug is looking for your recommendation on this. Thanks, Doug. I recommend approve. Okay. Been moved, approved, and recommended, moved, seconded, and recommended by our executive director. Um, Doug, how do you vote? Aye. David? David, are you there? Not hearing David. Maybe he Move needs on. to unmute his mic. Aye. David votes aye. Betsy? Aye. Betsy votes aye. Paul? Aye. Paul votes aye. Chair votes aye. Unanimously passed resolution 2020-04. Uh, item C here, April work session topic lists. Um, Sarah, uh, I will ask you to, to uh, maybe uh, talk about this, but uh, the one thing that's come up this evening that we know we need to put on there is uh, how to handle the vacancy created by Paul's resignation. What else do we need uh, or have we committed to put on our April work session? Great, and I'm uh, pulling that up on the screen. Give me one moment, I apologize. Okay. So folks can see what we are working with. There we go. Um, so certainly um, process uh, for addressing our midterm elected seat appointment um, to be included on here. I'd like to also recommend, um, this is outside of the meeting as discussed today, um, under policy development, uh, our bid policy, we're moving into a season uh, where we are going to be um, working with contractors to do project implementation. And uh, we've identified some challenges um, or some, some items that are no longer um, up to date in our bid policy. So recommending that we um, review and revise that. Um, an update on the equipment rental program work and, and soil testing I'm happy to provide during this time. Okay, so we have everything that's on the screen in front of us with the addition of working on bid policy, getting an update on equipment rental um, and soil testing program and the addition of filling Paul's vacancy. Anything else on our tentative uh, topic list from board members? Could we just fix that typo on number four? <laughs> yeah, we probably should, huh? <laughs> okay. All right, we'll use that as our tentative list for our April work session then. Um, should you move number six to the end because that happens almost every yes, time at the work session? Yeah, we normally do that. Thank you. Well, I had another question. 
Go ahead, um, Betsy. Uh, isn't eight, aren't we taking care of eight tonight? Regarding the, um, the executive director evaluation process, we, we passed 2020-04. We did uh, at our last work session, there seemed to be interest from the board in getting partner feedback um, as part of the mid-year review for, uh, for Sarah's performance. And so I think that was what we wanted to talk about the, to the extent to which we want to bring that into the mid-year evaluation. Okay, maybe we could clarify, uh, change the language slightly, executive director, mid, Mid-year. Yeah, let's do that. Mid-year executive director evaluation process. Thank you. Good catch. Okay. That's our tentative topic list. Last item on our agenda here, uh, added by Doug. Uh, Doug requested an update on the status of the collective bargaining agreement. Great, so uh, uh, both uh, parties um, have reviewed and ratified the collective bargaining agreement. It's been signed by uh, the bargaining team on um, the uh, district side. It's been signed by all of the staff on the union side. It was sent over to uh, the union uh, right kind of at the beginning of this COVID-19 um, uh, health crisis for signature. Um, we've sent an additional um, electronic copy in hopes for signature uh, and haven't received that back yet. Um, so again, it's been ratified by both parties, so it's been approved. Um, and then it's been signed by everyone except for the actual union uh, negotiator's signature. Um, I sent them another um, email today just asking if they uh are able to provide that signature back to us so that we can include that with our full uh cba and get that um in pdf and out to folks and, and uploaded um and i will definitely let the board know uh, uh what the timeline is looking like uh for getting that signature back so we can get that finalized Good. Thank you, Sarah, question. and thanks for the quick email response earlier today. My pleasure. Okay. This is Paul. Um, so the, as far as I understand, the, the contract, the, the bargaining agreement is totally in effect. Is so if I understand it correctly, we just, you're reluctant to post it on the web or put it in our board packet until we get what's the signature. Um, and I'm not sure that needs to be a holdup. Um, you could substitute a signature page later, or sometimes we used to just do like, if they send an email, say, consider it signed, and you just say signed electronically on the document. I don't think there should be a bottleneck to being able to post it and share it. I'm certainly happy to uh, share with the board. I would. I would prefer to wait to put it on our website, our, our public website, until we do have all of the signatures. But if the board would like um, to do that uh, now, I certainly can. Is there a desire among the board to put it up now, or uh, would we rather wait? This is Doug. I want to rather wait. Okay. Doug would rather wait. That's my position as well. Um, Betsy, David, Paul? I could go either way. I'm fine think. with waiting also. This is David. Okay. So it sounds like the majority of the board is saying, let's wait till we get the final signature before posting it publicly. I'd be interested in what Ben thinks. Um, I have two thoughts on that. One, um, if whenever a signature is missing, there's always the possibility of the person signing coming in and saying, well, no, wait a second, something isn't quite right. I don't, I think that's very unlikely here, but that is a reason to wait. Um, and I think that that is probably a very good reason to wait. 
Um, the second one is that if there's a public records request for it, um, if it's posted on the website, uh, that would be trivially answered by referring them to the website. Um, but it is probably none, still easily answered by giving them the document, which is a public record at this point and should be disclosed to a request. Um, so I think that uh, um, I would recommend waiting um, just in case there's a, a, a strange and unforeseen snag in the signature. Um, and uh, as long as we are prepared to produce it in a public record request if asked. Okay, so majority of the board prefers to wait. Legal counsel recommends we wait. So it sounds like that's our direction for now. A question. Um, is it, uh, I just want the board to have access to it. Is it, um, can we go ahead and get it put in our C binders or um, posted on that um, shared uh, drive that was created? So yes. have easy access to it? Yes, we can do that. Okay. The board members will have immediate access. We will wait to uh, give public access via the website until we have final signature. All right. Um, believe it or not, folks, it's 6.52. We're three minutes ahead of our scheduled adjournment time, but I would uh, consider a motion to adjourn if someone wants to make one. Uh, I'll motion to adjourn. David moves to adjourn. Is there a second? I second. Seconded. <laughs> seconded by Paul. Well, the no. rest of the board. <laughs> I want to make <laughs> seconded by everyone. Okay. Uh, um, uh, roll call on adjournment. Betsy. I would like to make a statement. Yes. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Go ahead, Paul. Thank you. Um, we didn't have board reports at the end. I just did want to comment. You, I think most of you saw the letter um, and the letter gave my, uh, that I was gonna resign this position the end of April. And I just wanted to say verbally to you all that um, it's, it's a difficult decision. I came into the CD with a goal of bringing it back to health. Um, and I feel like I've accomplished that. And you guys are amazing to work with. Um, the staff is incredible. And I just, it's just, uh, just want to let you know, it's, there are lots of reasons I would stay, but I just have some personal reasons why I would like to uh, focus on other things. And um, so I apologize if, if I, you're left in the lurch or given more work, but I uh, I've enjoyed uh, how everything has turned out and um, just wanted to tell you something verbally and not just in a letter. So thank you. Thank you, Paul. And uh, certainly this is on our April uh, work session topic list. So you will be present to help us figure out how to proceed to fill the vacancy that you've created with your resignation. So thank you for uh, for not being done yet and, and being there to uh, help us figure out some continuity in the process. Happy to. Thank you, Paul. And you have been a pleasure to work with and I'm sure you'll continue to be. Okay, Got me well, buying we're... lots of local food, I'll tell you that. <laughs> right on. We'll return back to the motion, roll call vote on the motion to adjourn. Betsy? Yes. David? Hey. Doug? If I have to, I. Paul? Oh. Aye. And chair votes aye. Thank you, everyone. We are now adjourned. Good work, everybody. Thanks, TJ. Good job, TJ. Thanks.